Welcome back to another edition of Dolany TV Edmonton Oilers discussion, the first official video. Well, now the season's over, right? Season's over. We've played pretty much all the way to the end without getting eliminated. I I call that a victory. 100% I do. We've got two games remaining on the schedule, and I honestly, you can be as disappointed in this season as you want to be, but I think at... Uh, at a rate of which we have had such a disaster to sit here and believe, to sit here and believe in ourselves that we weren't officially eliminated until the night of April 1st. Uh, well, you know what? I, I, I can't come to terms exactly with still not making the playoffs with Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, 100 point seasons, a bunch of guys with career highs, but to, to be eliminated as terrible, as awful, as just nonsensical this season has been. This season has been made out to be. This season has been cast as. This season has been written off as many times as it has. And you know what? To be eliminated on April 1st. I ain't complaining. You know what? Actually, not a bad effort. Sorry, we've got three more games to go. What the heck am I missing here? Blind, stupid, or deaf, or dumb, or something. I don't know. But uh, let's go get to the schedule here, my friends, because essentially there's a couple of things. We've got a game today. That's why I'd be doing a game preview, but it's more sensical to be doing my Edmonton Oilers Eliminated because at this point, doing the game previews, there's nothing to preview anymore. There, there's nothing left. Uh, Leon Dreisaitl, I can cover it every single night for the next three if you care. But honestly, what I'll be covering is just wrapping up my thoughts as we head into San Jose, as we head into Calgary. I'll have a special video on Friday or Saturday afternoon talking about what's happening for that 8 p.m. Mountain Time start in Calgary. Well, of course, the Battle of Alberta. You know I live outside of Calgary. We'll get to that on Friday or Saturday. But let's go. Three games to go. Colorado, San Jose, Calgary. Three weeks ago, those were looking like the most crucial games of our season, okay? And, and to have it come to terms that they won't be only a day prior to the Colorado game, you know what? I'm not complaining, like I said. I think... It's been an absolute mess of a season, and to be officially eliminated on April 1st. Guys, you have been with the Oilers, most of you, since long before 2008, 2009. That's where I'm going to really put it. And you know what? We have been eliminated in mid to early March. Well, what? Every, every but one to two years this year counted of those seasons. So... Sit here and relax a little bit, I guess, is we, uh, what I'm saying. Head held high. That, that's what I'm saying. Just hold our heads high and just sit here and appreciate that, you know what, no matter how bad it got, no matter how bad it has been, no matter how good it was, we didn't exactly completely crop the bed. Did a lot of the players on the team, did a lot of the management, did a lot of everything crop the team. Yes, a, a lot crop the bed for the Oilers this season. However, in the standings, in the NHL, we didn't, technically, being eliminated on April 1st. That, that's what, April 6th, last game of the year? Well, that's a whole five days before the end of the 82-game schedule. You know what? Tough? Yes. Sucks the way it's gone? Yes. But, uh, yeah, it, it's tough. It, 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 it's, it, it's tough to come to terms with, and I know I sound probably like a crazy person trying to be okay with it, Given how this season's gone, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm fine. But to sit here and say that it's the end of the world, to say that the Oilers need to head for a rebuild, to say that the Oilers are doomed, to say it will never get better, to say it, it, it's, it's over, game over, just shut down, never be a fan again. Guys, this season has not been that kind of season. This season has been one of... Tremendous upside, tremendous downside, but in every downside, there's a look to the future of how it can be an upside. And obviously, my thing, there's no need for a rebuild. You've got a high draft pick coming no matter what, right? Obviously, in the top 10, 15, depending on how the lottery works out for us, if it goes for us, if it goes against us, or we stand pat. Now you sit here and think, okay, the smartest move the Oilers can do unless they've got somebody that they think is going to be the next Matthew Kachuk, you got to trade the pick. Well, obviously, retool. What does that do, right? You get in somebody, if you can package that pick in Milan Lucic for a guy who can be that bona fide second liner for Ryan Nugent Hopkins next year, that's massive, right? You bring in a guy that's making 
4.5 and you get rid of the Lucic contract clean and clear. Well, suddenly, guys, that's a whopping $1.5 million in cap space and suddenly that allows the land slideth moves to start making. But where does that start? You've gone the whole, well, pretty much all of 2019 with this team except for, what, 20 days of January without an actual general manager in place. That means that, honestly, this general manager has got to come in with a plan and day one start executing. Problem I have with that is you're letting Bob Nicholson lead the charge, okay? And that's that's not boding well with me as an Oilers fan right now. So to sit here and uh, try and come to terms with everything, right? Eliminated in April, we've got a long way to go, and we've got Connor McDavid, who's very frustrated. I'll get to that later on tonight. I'm probably going to do a video during the intermission or whatever. I don't know what I'm doing tonight. I got to cook. I got to clean. I got to I, I gotta get ready for Saturday, for crying out loud. So <sighs> breathe, relax, calm down, and just... Uh, Sit here. It's now time for reevaluation. We have to reevaluate ourselves as fans, right? We have to sit here and go over every single player on the roster, every single guy we could possibly think of as head coach, and just come to terms and really find our positions on where we want. Because there's going to be a lot of discussion, there's going to be a lot of chatter, there's going to be a lot to be said, a lot to be done from pretty much, well, last night now until June 22nd. That, that's what we're going to find ourselves. That span, there's so much about to happen in Edmonton Oilers land. Obviously, I invite you to stay tuned because I'm going to be covering as much of it as humanly possible. But you sit here, right? We, we, we've gone through a hard, hard season. 79 games of heart and soul, blood and tears, sweat and death, and it's over. But the worst is yet to come. That's the hard part. The worst yet best is yet to come with our Edmonton Oilers this year. 2019 is an absolute rainbow, right? You start on one crappy point and the pot of gold's over here. Now we are going to all have seven or eight, right? I say rainbow because there's so many ways you can get there, whether you're on the red strand, the blue strand, the green strand, the violet strand. There are so many ways we're going to get to the pot of gold at the end of 2019 on December 31st, when hopefully, if you're an Oilers fan, obviously you're thinking we're going to be in a good position to compete in 2020 for the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs. Now, if you're a cynical fan who's sitting here saying it's not going to get better, come on, dude. Like, seriously, just give, give it a shot. Just go into this offseason optimistic. That's all I'm asking. Go into the offseason optimistic. Hope for the best and see what happens because we're going to have a new GM we're going to have a new head coach, 95%, because you can't mistake that Ken Hitchcock was telling his boys you were eliminated a week before they were officially eliminated. That was a newser I heard on CBC this morning, so that's as much facepalm as it comes to this season. But you know what? Eliminated April 1st. Okay, it's I can cut it a million different ways. I can cut it any angle you want to talk about. I, I can I can go with. But like I said, it's heads held high, and now it's on to the next. And obviously, there's still some storylines to be played out. Gene Prince Bay had a lot of fun with it for his April Fool's joke last night, but you just got to go out there and hold out hope. Because if, if you're an Oilers fan and you don't hold out hope, you ain't an Oilers fan. That's, that's what I'm going to tell you. Because... Ladies and gentlemen, the one thing Oilers fans have had since day one is hope. There's always hope that it's going to get better. The darkest days are always covered by the brightest mornings. And as an Oilers fan, you know eventually those days come. Eventually they do because, you know what, at the end of the day, we got Connor McDavid for a couple more years. You got Leon Dreisaitl locked up. You got Ryan Nugent Hopkins next year. At the end of the day... No matter how bad this roster is, the core makes this roster competable year to year if you have a GM that's capable of doing his job. So, eliminated April 1st. What do I say, guys? Heads held high. On to the next one. Let's see where it takes us because it's been a heck of a ride. I've appreciated it. That doesn't mean we're done yet because there's an off-season to go. And then, boys, season two of Dolany TV Edmonton Oilers coverage. She'll be coming hotter than hell to you 
pretty much before you know it. I can't even kid. We'll be talking about Oilers 2019-2020 season before we know it. So let's appreciate what we got this year in terms of how crappy it was. But in terms of how it finished, it could have finished a lot worse. So guys, I'm Tyson this Stolen ATV. I don't know where your head's at. That's where my head's at. I will catch you in the next one.